So I welcome everyone to uh, the Flash Talks uh, of Presentations, which is the um, session 12 of the DCMI 2022 conference. And this is uh, taking place at uh, nine o'clock UTC. Uh, so we'll, I'm Alistair MacDonald from the University of Edinburgh, and we'll be having a series of four short presentations uh, making for a virtual poster session. Uh, and this will last 30 minutes. So what we'll do is we'll have all presentations and then we'll have general questions at the end. So. I'm just trying to put my screen up. So our first presentation is from uh, Imma Subarat and it's uh, entitled Linked Open Data Enabled Bibliographic Data Load BD 3.0. And Imma is a Senior Knowledge and Information Management Officer at the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, the FAO. She currently leads three FAO programs, the Agrivoc Thesaurus, the International System for Agricultural Science and Technology, and the access to global online research in agriculture with the objective to enhance accessibility and visibility to knowledge, information and data produced by FAO member countries. She has a wide range of interests spanning areas including library and information science, open access and science, linked open data and knowledge organisation systems. She is also the current chair of the Improving Global Agricultural Data Community of Practice at the Research Data Alliance. So, Sonny, if you're ready, we could uh, go to uh, Emma's first uh, presentation, please. Thank you, Thank you so much for having our poster link Open Data and Bibliographic Data, the DVD 3.0. In the DCMI 2022, I'm Ima Sibirats. I work for the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, and this uh, poster has been uh, has been um, prepared together with Marcel Zen from the Kent State University. This is a practical guide on how to select appropriate encoding strategies to link open data and enable bibliographic data. Essentially, uh, in the context of producing linked open data and particularly bibliographic data, data and service providers are likely to have many specific questions related to encoding strategies. For example, what metadata standards should be followed in order to publish any bibliographic data as linked data? What is the minimal set of properties that a bibliographic data set should include to ensure meaningful data sharing? Is there any metadata model or application profile that can be directly adopted for producing bibliographic data specifically, speci especially from a local database? If the control vocabulary that has been used is available as linked data, what kind of values should be exchanged through the repository, specifically the literal from form representing a concept or the URI identifying the concept? In the last question, how should data be encoded to move from a local database to a linked data data set? So in, uh, all this lead, led to the efforts of the creation of LODVD, a practical guide on how to select appropriate encoding strategies for producing uh, link open data, graphic um, data. The guide was born with the purpose of assisting data providers in selecting appropriate encoding strategies. And essentially, LODVD was initially issued in 2011 and updated in 2015 with the new version 2.0. And uh, this new version included a new crosswalk to schema.org vocabulary, which was founded by several search engines in 2011. Then we uh, did uh, a new version in 2020, uh, which is the version 3 and that is fully available online is now we, um, became uh, actually uh, a book. Following both DCMI uh, metadata terms, up-to-date uh, specification and W3C's recommendation data catalog vocabulary decad, 
Version 2, released in early 2020, LogDVD conducted a full modification and extension in 3.0 edition. As the movement of open um, research data has become more mainstream, this new version also includes metadata describing research data resources based on the experience of FFAO, uh, FAO's AGRIS pilot project of integrating research data sets metadata from United States Department of Agriculture, USDA, which was successfully conducted in 2019. LODVD 3.0, published in December 2020, includes properties from multiple namespaces, as you can see in this uh, slide. Here is the roadmap of the LODVD uh, 3. There is a conceptual model and to be there and a set of decision trees to be explained uh, next. The core component of LODVD contains a set of decision trees for common properties used in describing bibliographic research instance. In order to facilitate the understanding and decision making by the, 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 the service, the data providers and service providers, which has professionals who have been dealing with different projects and legacy data, most probably having various levels of data information and skills and speaking different languages, etc. The LODVD guide presents each of the decision trees in both an image and a table. Starting from the property that describes a resource instance, the flowchart presents decision points and gives a step by step solution to a given problem of metadata encoding. Each decision tree is delivered with various acting points and the matching encoding suggestions um, that helped the end user. At the end of the flow chart, alternative sets of metadata terms for selection are specified. Here, for instance, you can see that this is a creator and uh, what brings you uh, the decision tree is to the decision to use DC terms uh, creator as the encoding um, property for this particular uh, metadata field. But you could also decide if you want to use or there is an authority data available as link data in that sense you can decide to use DC creator which would be required would require a string only or this the terms creator that can be uh, filled with a string or also a URI. It's as you can see, there's a lot of uh, processes that helps you here in the decision trees to take the right decision with regards to the encoding required according to the sources that you are using. The full range of options presented by this guide will enable data providers to make their choices according to the, their development stages, internal data structures, and the reality of their practices. You can see as well that you can get a lot of examples about this, uh, what these metadata terms or how these metadata terms can be filled. Here you can see that from the various data dictionaries and sample records that we use to build these um, properties, we moved to decide to use nine clusters of properties and um, there are 22 decision trees and scenarios that help you to decide how to encode these metadata. Just a summary. In, uh, in order to enhance the quality, interoperability, and effectiveness of information exchange, the LODVD guide is built on five key examples. To promote the use, the use of well-established metadata standards and the emerging link open data uh, enabled vocabularies proposed by the link data community to encourage the use of authority data, controlled vocabularies and syntax encoding standards in metadata statements whenever possible to encourage the use of resources, uniform resource identifiers, URIs as data values when they are available, to facilitate the decision making process regarding data encoding for the purpose of enabling the meta metadata being fundable, accessible, interoperable and reusable fair 
and to provide the reference support that is open for suggestions of new properties and metadata terms according to the needs of the linked data community. And I would like to thank so much again DCMI for having invited us um, to present this poster. And if you have uh, or you need any more information, you can contact us. Otherwise, here you can find the DOI and you can access to the book. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you, Sally. Um, Eva is actually uh, did um, send the pre-recorded presentation and she isn't actually here in the session. Uh, so we'll move on next to our second speaker. This is uh, it's Mirwa Lee. And Mirwa is uh, Assistant Professor for Library and Information Science Education at Kongju National University. Her research focuses on current cataloging related theory and trends, such as RDA, Ferber, the LRM and BIPRE. She's a member of several metadata uh, committees, including the Korean Cataloging Committee, the National Bibliographic Standardization Committee of the National Library of Korea, and the editorial board of the Korean uh, Biblia Society for Library and Information Science. So, Miwa. Uh, thank you for your my resume showing to others and then the, I'm not sure who, for whom is it good morning, for whom is it good afternoon, and then anyway, and then in Korea time is good morning, and then the, I'm Iwa from South Korea, Gongju National University. Uh, the, my uh, main topic is uh, mapping big frame with the RDA for representative expression of the LLM. And then there is a main uh, uh, research part for me nowadays. And then, so, yeah. Usually, it's, sometimes it's a very uh, unusual thing when I have uh, presentation, sorry. And then next slide is uh, 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 why I am uh, focusing on the representative expression of the LRM. And then the, I think LRM's representative expression is a new attribute for describing a work. Uh, uh, representative expressions values are taken from a representative or a, uh, expression of the work. And in LRM uh, documents, are uh, representative expression attribute were not detailed and described by several examples according to a resource type like these pictures, you know, just a text is a language intended audience and music is a key and medium of performance. That's it, not detailed in the LRM. So therefore in the many libraries is a schemas. It's a, for example, uh, B frame or, you know, just a idea is a very consideration how to accept the LRM's representative expression. And then the uh, idea is a, uh, as the cons uh, content rules, uh, they are uh, ideas already uh, reflect the uh, specific uh, new attribute of uh, LRM's representative expression, I think. And then this is a picture, it's ID uh, from the ID. And then, but uh, B frame, not yet, I think, because the B frame is uh, in coding format, and then B frame has been revised in 2016. And then the LRM is uh, finished 2017, therefore is a age uh, the gap. So I think uh, B-Frame couldn't accept the LRM's representative expression uh, perfectly or completely. So therefore I uh, uh, try to uh, research like this. And then the, my research is uh, just a mapping, you know, just mapping LRM RDA to B-Frame and for representative, uh, focusing on the representative expression attribute, uh, expression attribute only. And then LRM says uh, was already to the represented, uh, reflected in the RDA like these pictures. 
And then their B frames is their question, I think. Yes. And then they're in LRMs. Uh, in, in RDA, there is uh, already uh, developed the detailed uh, elements for the representative expression of, of uh, LRM like this. There is almost 14 elements uh, for a representative expression of LRMs. And then the uh, now is uh, how to, uh, now I are just uh, mapping the RDA to B frame. And then the, uh, after the mapping, uh, and then I, uh, I uh, categorize four categories, and then the I, uh, four categories, and then the, uh, my mapping is uh, just not flat, flat style, just uh, uh, my mapping is uh, just a uh, consideration of the um, you know, ontology style. Ontology is usually have the property and class. Therefore, I uh, consideration uh, ontology style. And one more is a uh, multi-pass, you know, just uh, uh, therefore it's ontology styles, it's uh, schemas. There is many multi-pass. Therefore, it's, uh, I uh, consider two things. And the first category is uh, uh, con uh, content and music key and so on, like this. And then there is the regarded the representative expression properties uh, because the, that property is only uh, could always be used uh, with the work class. This is the, you know, the, the work uh, contents in B frame. B frame is uh, defined, the, the contents is only used with the work. Therefore, it's a, therefore it's a representative expression is a work property, work property. Therefore, it's a, that is a very um, a reasonable, uh, reasonable things. And the second category is uh, like this, many things. And then there is the, uh, could be the used as a representative expression property if that is the if condition, if select work class. And then that is, uh, for example, in the Asia uh, aspect ratio, there is a, a limitation. The comments is uh, that a, a aspect ratio is uh, used with the work or instance. Therefore, uh, if you describe the uh, Asia race, uh, uh, sorry, uh, aspect ratio uh, under the work class. That is a uh, small limitation. And then third categories uh, as follows. And then that is very difficult because I try to find the uh, class and you know just uh, properties. And then there, for example, uh, capture place in capture place. Capture place is uh, uh, under the work. And then the on the uh, capture place is a property, and the work is a you know class. And then capture has the uh, you know kept another capture yeah, class. And then under the capture class, there is a place that is a right place for the uh, place of capture of representative expression. And then therefore, it's a many multi class. Therefore, it's a very uh, it is not uh, precise to figure out the representative expression of for LRMs. Therefore, it's a very difficult categories. And the first is a date and extent. Date and extent is a very general uh, L, uh, a, a property, so uh, could be used in all kinds of class. Therefore, could not be identified as. Uh, a representative expression property, I think. And then the resulting and then the mapping after mapping, I uh, conclusion. In conclusion, B frame could describe the rep representative expression of LRM without a specific property definition defined. But uh, I think for more uh, preciseness in describing LRM's representative expression and then following uh, properties as the additional properties is needed to be the developed in B frame. Yes, that is the by like this. And then that is the my uh, presentation end. And then the, I would like to, my uh, research is a progress uh, work on progress. And then the, I uh, try to accept many opinion from other authors, uh, audience and then moderators. Thank you.
Thank you, Rua. And um, just to remind everyone, if you have any questions, uh, you could either put your hand up at the end, or if you have anything that you'd like me um, to put to any of these speakers, please put that in the chat and uh, just say who the question is for. Thanks. So we'll move on to our next um, presenter. That's uh, Yu Yao. Yu is a graduate student in the School of Information Management at Wuhan University, working on knowledge organization and scientific data. She received her undergraduate education and Bachelor of Library Science degree from the School of Information Management, Wuhan University. Um, she has participated in the scientific data sharing project funded by the Na National Natural Science Foundation of China and the Economic Managed Data Database Project funded by the Ministry of Education of the People's Republic of China. So, you, um, over to you. Okay, uh, dear moderator, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm honored and proud to have this opportunity to speak at this conference. And today I'd like to present my poster, the research on the construction and application of the semantic based ontology module for the biographical data. Um, in the first part of the report, I'm going to um, begin with a few general comments concerning biography and some problems that we are facing in the process of biographical information organization and retrieval. Um, biography is a histor historical general dating back to the antiquity, and it is a scholar scholarly resource in history and the prose biography. Uh, it not only records the lives of individuals, but also serves as a witness to social customs, moral judgments, and historical themes. Um, however, most biographies follow the traditional form of non-structured tests and cannot reveal the semantic features of the biographies. And all of these has hindered information mining and retrieval. Um, facing with the information, uh, mining and retrieval needs, semantic um, web technologies provide a solution by deep semantic descriptions and services. Um, and uh, with the rise of digital humanities research, the content of the biographies has gradually become richer and more diverse. I mean, for example, uh, Mr. Peng Feizhang, who is a very famous library scientist in China, uh, um, established his autobiography in 2020. Uh, this autobiography has hundreds of rare photos and manuscripts and a total of um, three million words. It is rich in characters, uh, events with complex relations and interrelations. Um, so on this basis, we constructed a, a biographical ontology based on existing ontology and some terms which are extracted from the uh, autobiography. And next, I would like to introduce uh, the proposed methodology. Um, by integrating mature ontology construction methods, five steps are followed in the development of this biography, a biographical ontology. Uh, the first is reusing uh, existing ontology. Um, an intensive in literature search was conducted to find related ontologies and the uh, conceptual framework of China biographical uh, database was one among them. Uh, it established mo uh, multiple forms of relations among complex, uh, complex uh, physical uh, objects. Uh, besides some common ontologies are also used as supplements. And the next, next is um, knowledge acquisition. In this part, we use a popular uh, test processing tool for Chinese to conduct uh, sentence segmentation, part of speech tagging and the named entity recognition. And the final result was, uh, was uh, 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 th uh, 322 terms related to people, 175 terms related to time, and, and so on. Uh, and the next is to define classes and classes hierarchy. Based on existing uh, ontologies and knowledge acquisition, the core classes of this ontology are 
and are uh, identified as Asian temporal place or resource and the um, official events. Uh, and and then, uh, next we defined it, the properties and the relations of the classes. Based on some attributes of existing ontologies, the biography code ontology was proposed containing uh, 22 classes, 60 properties and uh, uh, 51 relationships. Uh, and uh, all the main classes and relationships are shown in this figure. Um, and last, we uh, conducted the ontology formalization. And in this uh, part, Protege was used as an actor for the ontology. Uh, the ontology was filled with data collected from uh, Mr. Pong's uh, 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 autobiography. And this table shows the metrics of the developed uh, ontology. And last, I would like to share something about the expected benefits of the ontology model. Uh, the first is the uh, information retrieval. Um, supposing the information to be acquired is all the students who have been taught by Mr. Pong um, and with the use of query module and the, the relationships called study at, we can get 111 students and then use the ontograph to get network, which is shown in this figure. Um, and next is semantic annotation. In this part, we choose the biography of Zhao Shiliang, uh, who is also a very famous librarian in China, as an example. And this figure shows the results. In this part, uh, firstly, the properties of uh, this librarian, like the, uh, the date of death, birth and death, the place of birth and death were extracted. Uh, secondly, the related organizations, groups, academic resource, time and place were also extracted and annotated. And the last is uh, semantic reasoning. Uh, based on the semantic data of the autobiography, the um, ontology based reasoner was used to achieve some implicit information. Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it has been my pleasure to present my poster and thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Yu. Um, so move on to our final um, presenter. Uh, well, this evening uh, for me, uh, this morning uh, for many of you, I realize it's uh, Daichi Machia. Uh, Daichi works at the uh, standardization section of the Digital Information Distribution Division of the National Diet Library Japan. He's been involved in a project to build a national platform for aggregating metadata of digital resources named Japan Search, where he examines RDF metadata schema. He also has experience in working with partner institutions of uh, National Diet Library Search, which is an aggregator of Japan Search for libraries in Japan. Daichi. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Daichi Machia. Uh, I work at National Diet Library Japan, the NDL for short. Today, I will make presentation covering practice to improve metadata interoperability around Japan Search, or JPS for short. In my presentation, I will introduce two practices. The first one is a guideline for metadata distribution in Japan. The second one is the second one is continuous improving of RDF data. Let me begin by talking about what Japan Search is and how we collect and provide metadata on it. Japan Search is a national metadata platform and for promoting the use of the content from Japanese digital archives or digital cultural and research resources. Japan Search is a national initiative and system development, operation, and collaborative practice are handled by NDL. Japan Search data providers upload metadata in a general file format, regardless of metadata schema. It gives the benefit of minimizing a partner's workload and enabling rapid expansion of searchable databases. After that, the metadata is converted to the RDF data by JPS staff 
and became available by a, by a Spark Group endpoint. As of September 2022, we have converted metadata of 23 million items from 149 database to RDF to utilize digital resources. There is a need for interoperability of metadata and discoverability of contents. Therefore, the NDL and academic libraries have collaboratively established the guideline called the Guideline for Metadata Distribution in Japan. Also, the RDF of JPS has been continuously improved to make effective information retrieving. Next, I will talk about the guideline. It was developed by NDL and the community of academic libraries to define efficient and suitable routes, suggest metadata standards, and a communication framework for metadata distribution. Japan search adapt an aggregated model like Europeana. In the library feed, the NDL plays the role of the aggregator and the provider the metadata of digital archives to JPS via NDL search, which is discovery service for the holdings and this is a collection of library and academic institution in Japan. One of the challenge is the aggregating digital archives, metadata from academic institutions, in contrast to metadata of journal articles provided to public. Their metadata distribution have not yet to be established. Therefore, the guideline defines delivering metadata by an institutional repository to NDL search as a suitable route for digital archives, as well as journal articles. Also, a need is recognized for interoperability between DC NDL, the schema for NDL search, and JPQA schema, the one for institutional repositories. Mapping between schema and future approach plan of each metadata schema are also indicated in the guideline. Next, I will talk about improvement of the RDF of JPS. In the RDF of Japan search, entity in metadata are described as URIs and linked to LOD hub to enable users to retrieve items with enriched condition using outer identifier and related information. Our recent effort is contribution to Wikidata. Wikidata has a property for indicating Japan search entity URIs. And they have start to adding unregistered unre un URIs. And this enable retrieving Japan search content with information in Wikidata. The slide shows this slide show the example of query retrieving Japan search items with creator's birthplace. Although the entity of Japan search does not have detailed information such as place of birth, linking to LOD hub enables search with complex conditions. In, con in conclusion, the NDL and academic libraries have collaborated to discover suitable routes, mapping and future schema update for metadata of digital archives for prestige optimization or metadata correcting of Japan search. Also, we improved the usability of RDF of Japan search by linking to LOD hub. Further efforts are planned to improve metadata interoperability as well as expand discovery database for the sake of expanding the utilization of digital content with Japan search. Thank you for, uh, thank you very much for listening. I think we had better uh, call an end to this session just now so that uh, people can go across to the next sessions that are um, starting in a couple of minutes. So apologies for the overrun and uh, thank you to all our speakers uh, and to everyone who's uh, attended. And thank you, Sunny, for uh, coordinating everything. So I'll uh, say goodbye now and hopefully see you at uh, the next session. Thank you.